For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome back to Around the World in 8 Minutes, where we at People's Dispatch are with you every week to bring you stories of people engaged in struggle across the world. Monday, March 8th, millions across the world took part in mobilizations and activities for International Women's Day. The day which has been celebrated by women across the world for over 100 years is a day to promote working class unity among women globally and raise their demands for rights and an end to sexist oppression. This March 8th, across Latin America and the Caribbean, hundreds of thousands of women took to the streets to protest against patriarchy in all of its forms and manifestations and to demand equal rights in all spheres of life. Women in several countries also demonstrated against growing femicides and gender-based violence in the region, as well as against an increasingly capitalist onslaught against the environment under neoliberal governments. Throughout Argentina, several massive demonstrations were held to demand an end to gender inequality in the workplace and effective measures against the alarming increase in femicides and other types of gender-based violence. In the first 67 days of this year, 65 women were murdered in Argentina for the simple fact of being a woman. In Brazil, under the banner of Fora Bolsonaro, or Out with Bolsonaro, thousands of women took to the streets of major cities to demand the resignation of Jair Bolsonaro and superior vaccination coverage against COVID-19, denouncing his government's mismanage of the pandemic that has left more than 260,000 people dead in the country. In Chile, close to half a million women gathered at the iconic Dignity Plaza in the capital Santiago and flooded the entire Alameda Avenue to express their rejection of the right-wing national government led by President Sebastián Piñera and its repressive security forces. This protest, like many others in Chile, was also violently suppressed by the Caribineros. However, Chilean women stood strong in the face of the tear gas and the water cannons and forced Piñera's repressors to retreat. In India, Tens of thousands of women gathered at the borders of the capital, New Delhi, where the current farmers' agitation is going on. They demanded rights and recognitions as farmers and continued the struggle against the three farm laws passed by the far-right Narendra Modi government. In Europe, major mobilizations were seen in countries like Spain, France, Belgium and others. In Poland, women under the leadership of the National Women's Strike demonstrated across the country, raising the slogan, Women's Day Without Compromise protesting the misogynist policies of the conservative Law and Justice Party-led government. Groups including the National Women's Strike and the Polish Left have been fighting the ban on abortions imposed by the Constitutional Court since last year. Finally, on Monday, March 8th, Brazilians received some good news in the midst of a deepening crisis in the country due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the mismanagement by President Jair Bolsonaro. Supreme Court Minister Edson Fachin ruled that the convictions against former President Lula da Silva in the Operation Car Wash case should be overturned. We spoke to Daniel Giovanas, who's a reporter with Brasil de Fato, who's covered the case very closely, and we talked to him to learn more about what this decision means for Brazil. First, on Monday afternoon, uh, Minister Edson Fachin from the Supreme Court, he recognized the incompetence of the 13th Federal Court of Curitiba in Paraná to judge uh, four cases of corruption and money laundering involving Lula in this operation. So the triplex case and the Etibaya site case and in which he was condemned in first and second instances and he was trying to revert these sentences uh, in superior courts. And two cases more uh, about donations and a land for the Lula Institute. Uh, this monocratic decision of Fakim, uh, it says that all these four cases are from now annulled uh, based on the argument of incompetence. Lula lawyers uh, have been insisting on this argument since uh, 2016, at least five years ago, they started arguing this. Uh, what they say and what now the, the Supreme Court uh, recognizes is that uh, the only reason for these cases to be there in Curitiba, in the federal court, uh, was the involvement of Petrobras, our state oil company, in the four accusations. 
But this involvement of Petrobras was never shown, never proved. And between the lines, what we can say, we can read, is that the judge, Sergio Moro, who first condemned Lula in the case of Triplex, uh, he was concentrating the cases involving the former president Lula in order to consolidate his position as a leader of the car wash operation in Curitiba. So it's important to remember that Sergio Moro, the same judge, former judge now, he became Minister of Justice in Bolsonaro government in 2019. And Bolsonaro won the elections mostly because Lula was arrested several months before the elections. So uh, in resume, the, the accusations against Lula, uh, they will be analyzed now uh, from the beginning by a new court in uh, Distrito Federal, in the capital, Brasilia. And they are unlikely to be judged before the next president, presidential race. I say that because with Fakin's decision, Lula recovered his political rights and now can run for president uh, in the next year. That's all we have time for and keep watching People's Dispatch.